All right, this is the uh, April 22nd meeting of the Conway uh, Select Board. We're being taped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing uh, later by our residents and the public. First item on the agenda is minutes for the April 16th meeting. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? I wasn't at the meeting, so. Right. Any changes? No changes at all. I thought they were very good. Yes. Very good, as usual. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the minutes. Yes. Do I have a second? All yes. in favor? Yes. Okay. Mm, I abstain. Yes. Okay, meetings attended by select board members. Bill? Yeah, Thursday I went at the uh, invitation of Nat uh, Representative Natalie Blaze to the uh, invitation only meeting with the chairs of the Joint Committee on Education in Northampton, Senator Jason Lewis and Representative Alice Pache. Um, and they are they were specifically there to get feedback on the the, the con committee with it. the the main work that they're doing is the revisions to the chapter 70 foundation budget in education which is super technical and super wonky um, and each of the local representatives was allowed three people except for uh, the state senator from Northampton who invited like 20 people um, <clears throat> uh, but it, it, uh, I got my points in, I got my questions asked, they announced on the spot um, that, that there's going to be a committee that's going to look into the issues in greater detail. Um, mm -hmm. and I was invited to, put, to give testimony on, in, on public record Monday, May 13th, which is the date of town meeting mm -hmm. um, in Great Barrington at 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, I guess I'm going to do that, but, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the issues are super complicated and yes, they are. The, yeah. the, 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 from, from, uh, fr from the, uh, right from the beginning of this thing, what, what they do that really hurts us in particular, they have, uh, a, a, a class size ratio that they assume and it really hurts smaller towns that can never have an average of that's the 20 kids per class that they assume and we get underfunded when they start with that ratio we get underfunded everything that flows from that ratio we get underfunded um, mm -hmm. and I, I talked about the uh, um, uh, the, the fact that they're adding, that they're using income, aggregate income as a factor in determining what our foundation budget is so that when we have two or three wealthy families moving into town, the result is our ability to pay mm -hmm. increases dramatically, which is what's happening this year. And it's why we have a 12% frontier increase. It has, uh, in, uh, 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 yeah, the assessment for frontier has gone up is 12% this year. And it's not frontier, it's the foundation budget. And it's because we had a good, we had, Trans Canada flipping on the switch of the dam. We had Comcast coming in, and then we had some wealthy families that moved into town, and all of which push our aggregate income up mm -hmm. so much that we took a multi hundred thousand dollar hit from that. And, That's and modeled after Vermont, isn't it? Not really, but um, w and what I talked about was that the use of aggregate income, for, you know, gross income, is so unfair because we don't get as a town we don't get to tax people on their income. Mm -hmm. We don't get a benefit from people having, again, uh, other than being able to pay the property taxes, which, yeah, and, and um, they, uh, and what, what my suggestion was that if they go to median income, just average income, we would be, uh, shouldn't the, have anything to do with it. The, the people, yeah. Should have to, right. the property tax, that, that's and, the only. And, and, and they, they have a percentage, they have a, they use a percentage, 58% property tax, 42% aggregate income and if they would just switch that by one percent it would cost the state like not very much and it would solve the problems in the frontier region so i testified mm -hmm. to that um and i'll testify to that next monday i did get criticism from some in the room they felt that anytime you address education from the expenses side you're falling into the argument of the people that just want to cut blah 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 and I didn't, and, and I, you know, my response was, you obviously never have presented a budget at town meeting and tried to convince people that it's worth paying for if you won't even talk about what the numbers are and you just want to just say it's an investment, not an expense. But um, that was a Northampton crowd that was like that. Yeah. So, so okay. yeah. They bought me dinner. Hey. Yeah. That's good. Sure. 
Yeah, there wasn't any beer included, though. Oh, yeah. There's another meeting coming up with Senator Hines, if you want. Yeah, Sen Senator yeah. Hines was there. He was fantastic, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I, I could let you know when it is, but he's uh, he, he's having a, a, a an education meeting. Yeah. Uh, out in Pittsfield. And he, that he, I'm hoping he to actually to. knew the details. He knew the nitty gritty. He yeah. was conversant in it. Um, and that wasn't true of other state politicians in the room whom I will not name. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. You Robert, I was away all week, so you're yeah, away. Yeah, that's man. right. You're away all week. I had no. Uh, I had no meetings. Guys are slacking off. No. I, I, no but yeah. Okay. Public comment is next. Do we have any public comment? I don't see any. Okay. Next item. Old business. Okay. Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Discussion with the chair. Dana. This is a letter to the selectmen dated April 22nd, 2019, Select Ward, Town of Conway, 32 Main Street, Pale Box 240, Conway, Mass. Gentlemen, I am writing to you in response to an email I received from Tom Hutchinson on April 11th, 2019. The context of the email contained, among other things, a veiled request for my resignation. This letter will fulfill that request. I have discussed with Tom the fact that the CIP committee was not willing to fulfill his request to do extensive research on issues they felt were the responsibility of paid employees. He suggested that I should find a new committee. I guess the time has come. My philosophy of how capital items should be acquired is also at odds with Mr. Hutchinson. When I asked for specifications of capital equipment to be requested, I was told, quote, we won't know what the specifications are until we go out to purchase, unquote. That is not how it's done. I wish you success with your new chairman. I have enjoyed my tenure as chairman of the Conway Committee. Sincerely, Dana S. Whitfield. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your service. Any questions? I didn't questions. ever remember seeing that email. Well, yes, I didn't pay attention to it. It was copied to John only. I've got a copy of it if you'd like to see it. I did send you a copy. Yeah, you, you may have. I must have skimmed over it. I didn't see the... Well, you didn't get it. They they did receive a copy of it There's in the last copy. few days. Yeah. Uh, you, have, you have it there. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. I'm sorry, Dana. I'm that's sorry. Right. Not a problem. Okay. Next item, town meeting and budget business. Thomas? Ah, that would be the highway facility, uh, Article 3. Gentlemen. Uh, we're talking about now. How are you, Peter? I'm good. Ron? Good evening. <clears throat> okay, what do we got? Well, what we're looking for is making sure we've got your support for the two articles that we have on for town meeting. Um, we just want to reaffirm everything is going forward, so there's no surprises anywhere. Well, well, you, you've seen the warrant. Yep. We, we I know. Unanimously <laughs> supported both of us. Yeah. Well, you have our support. I'm grateful for that. Okay. It's just that if you have any questions for us now, because previously when we had public meetings for this back in 14, there was questions that got arisen by um, members that we had their support from mm -hmm. that we felt caused issues concerns for residents 
we want to make sure that 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 doesn't happen again. Um, I don't want to mention any names or anything, but um, just want to make sure that we're we're good. You know that you know because we're going to have a public meeting. Of, yeah, May fourth, and in that meeting we would really like it if any of you come, any of the board members for finance and all them, that <coughs> we don't, we when, don't. When is the meeting? May That's board. a Saturday? It's a Saturday. Okay, and what time? Nine o'clock. In the morning? Yes. Okay. I'm uh, where, be, where? It's at the town hall. Town hall. I okay. am, unfortunately, not available for that. Okay, so we've got May 4, town hall at nine in the morning. Now, are we, are we getting that out to, to residents, Tom? We're trying to do our best. We, it's on the web page now. We will be putting it on the highway Facebook page. Okay. Um, any way we can get out short of doing a mailing. Um, and you want to review with the residents your plans for the right. facility? Right, give them a chance okay. to ask questions about what would bring into town meeting. And the whole committee is going to be there? Yes. Uh, yeah, pretty, I mean, pretty assuming much. Walter Walter is now recovering from hip surgery. Today. Oh, no. oh, he is. It's hip, hip surgery today. So oh, we're okay. assuming everything went well, but then we don't know. What 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 kind of hip surgery? Or hip replacement? Oh, he, oh, he replaced. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, too much okay. golf. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, too much golf. Me tree. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. not yeah. for a little while. Not for a little while. Gee. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, see, I didn't, I didn't realize he was going to get a hip yeah. replacement. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ron, Lisa just sent out a save the date invitation for a retirement party. Um, if you replied all to that and changed the subject, you, it might actually go to all committee chairs and department heads. Okay. Uh, um, Michelle was actually going to talk to her tomorrow. Uh, she's out for two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Okay. Oh, I see. All right. That's, yeah, <laughs> so that's a way day. to get that done. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're trying to figure out every way that we can to get it out there about this meeting. Okay. I guess the other you know, question is, do you have any questions now that might be best answered in are, this forum? Are there any changes to what you've already told us? Not at the moment. Okay. Um, um, I, I would certainly suggest that, that not only at this public meeting, but at the, um, the pre-town meeting and the town meeting itself, that everybody be ready for uh, questions that might come out of the left field. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, we, we, what's the best, from your experience, what's the best way to prepare for those kind of questions, or you can't? Mm -hmm. Well, but whatever you whatever you have, just just make sure you have it backed up by some pretty good facts and okay. and uh, figures. Yep. You know, and and hopefully there won't be too many questions that are that are crazy. Or from from people who, at the last minute, think they know more than you guys know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I would say that the most that you can learn is is um, in pre in preparation is to uh, talk to people that have expressed an opinion against the thing and see mm -hmm. see what arguments are effective, what arguments aren't. My, my th the the. Th I do think that you're going to feel questions about to things like the, the things that haven't quite been nailed down real, just as of the last meeting, the total cost kind of a thing, mm -hmm. the where you're going to pay for it kind of a thing. And so I, I know Walter's working on those, um, so he can't really, it's not quite fair to bring them up because, you know, uh, but uh, well, I, I, think, I think you're going to be at least ask those questions. Sure. So One of the things is we're working off kind of estimates. Yep. Um, and there's no way that we can have firm numbers until we have money to move forward mm -hmm. with um, the designer and stuff. So, I mean, it does make it difficult, but... We've done our best, I think, to uh, get numbers that are reasonable. 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 Sure. Yeah. Um, and, uh, we will, and we still have some more... Uh, in the next couple, in the next two intervening weeks, we'll be doing some more research and gathering of figures and stuff. So I think people are going to want to know how is this different than the mm -hmm. proposals in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this isn't the same plan. This is, uh, and it's pretty clear. I mean, from the way we've approached it this time, yeah, that uh, yeah. 
with the help of the previous committee's learning, um, we, we changed up a couple of things and we've gotten other information that was not given to the previous committees. Um, and it's also not starting over. I mean, you know, you are using a lot of the stuff right. from before that, that was correct. You know, learned from before. We're taking a different approach, but where the buildings are basically the same, mm -hmm. um, with the maybe some minor changes to the roof line of the maintenance facility, uh, but and and the overall structure of the building, but the you know footprints are pretty much the same and, and overall functions. And have, have you thought about a handout? Yes, we have. I, I, I have a. I've been working on a, sort of a chart that shows you know 2014, 2019, and mm -hmm. what what's what we've, how we've changed it, what we've learned since then. I think that would help a lot. Yeah. yeah. And Phil offered for us to use if we can do it uh, plugging into his phone somehow and brought, yeah. Uh, like a digital projector. Right. Oh, we have, yeah, we, we can get a projector if you want to do, yeah. want to I don't do know, a, I guess a show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. We, abilities, but we, can, we can do that. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. I thought Walter's um, and yours presentation, but when, before the Finance Committee, that, I thought that was, and, and us that a few weeks ago, I thought that was outstanding, uh -huh. and that that as a theme and as a as just sort of a just in, enlarge upon that whole thing. Uh -huh. But that was just that that was a winner. Uh -huh. You know, you could even we could even run that as the meeting is filling up if you wanted. To. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know. Or yeah, or a handout or something if that's okay. Thing to hand. Do. I I I think handout plus. You know that Visual, to yeah. give people right. as, as much information as, as you can yep. to explain the situation. Yeah. And the the more you can f focus on the the items the sa of, of savings that you've right. identified, right. the better. And I understand what you're saying. There's you can't have certainty at this stage, but um, you can share you can share the extent of the work that's been done. That's what's really impressive and will impress people. And one thing that has changed since 2014 to 2019 is is costs of materials have gone up, particularly with tariffs and and all. And actually, we changed away from from steel buildings for that for that reason. One of the reasons why. Um, so it might be behoove us. You know, um, Andrea, is that Andrea from, because she mentioned some yeah. percentage that if you took this exact set of plans and you tried to build it now, it would be, you know, 2014 plus 5 or 5% five or 10% or something yeah. like that. So we might have that figure. Mm. So. Well, maybe by then the deal will be made with China. And we'll have there we go. No problems there. Yeah. Who knows? I'm not going to. I'm not going to tie my star. In my <laughs> 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 well, the fact that you're doing a lot of the work this time, so correct. And, and you know that that'll save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you certainly have our full support. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, if you have any idea how much money it'll save, that would be helpful as well. Right. You know, no numbers. On that. Numbers yeah. are key. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. A good comparison. Okay. Because don't forget, last time, the plan didn't fail by much. Right. No. Two or four votes, I forget right. which, but it was it was it was very slim. So Two and, and people understand the need. Yeah. That's so if if the if the price comes down a bit, um, you know we've we've been salting money away for the last five years, so we've got that money in there. And, uh, yeah. you know, I think I think it's a winner as long as as long as it's explained clearly and, and properly. I I think think it's fine. And the, the savings that I can recall doing the amount of work that we're going to be doing ourselves isn't has to be a significant savings. Yeah. The, the, the 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 aspects where you don't have to pay prevailing wage has to be a significant saving. Not mm -hmm. not having to use an OPM has to be a significant saving. Mm -hmm. um, the relatively inexpensive supervision things that we worked out with Andrea or whatever and mm -hmm. that, that has to be a significant say I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. it just I don't know about this stuff but it just seems like yeah, yeah. seems like you did a great job mm -hmm. well, it works all out any other questions guys no okay okay thank you for all your work guys yeah Peter Ron thank you have a good night you too, you too. Let us know about Walter if you hear anything. Yeah, I put a phone call to uh, Catherine this afternoon, but I think she's probably still there. But it's, both, yeah, it's, yeah. it's easier than, than knee replacement surgery, they said. So wow. It's a simpler joint. It was regularly scheduled. <laughs> wow. It's supposed to be out one day. Thank you.
Really? Yep. Good night. Mr. Mr. Hutchison, do you have anything for us on uh, the survey of uh, residents regarding the electricity aggregation? Well, I put this on at the request of so, Mr. Armstrong. So I can talk about that. Okay, so so I, I don't know if you have the survey, but I, I gave Tom a sample survey. I didn't bring it with me. but So in the electrical aggregation project, we're kind of at the point where we're waiting for the DPU to approve our plans. Right. And it very likely will be well into the summer, if not early fall, till that happens. It just takes a very long time. Yes. And, uh, and something that may even slow that down more is apparently Boston has decided to aggregate. And due to the close relationship between Marty Walsh and Governor Baker, they may jump ahead of us in line, which traditionally never happens. So, no, it's, so. it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a long time for Boston to get through the process. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about. So that wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about Boston jumping ahead. Great. Believe me, they're they're in at least a year, eighteen months okay. before. Then they will be yeah. done by then. So, yeah. So so one of the things that all of the towns, each town individually, is going to have to decide. We're going to get we're going to get bids from from electricity providers, and bids for various. Um, uh, of programs or, or or combinations of basic electricity plus some amount of green mm -hmm. and um, and each of each of the towns is going to get to decide we'll have to de all decide which of the basic provider we choose mm -hmm. but then how we add additional green to that um, we're all going to get to decide individually yeah. Yeah. and which of those plans is our default plan that everybody gets automatically moved into we're going to get to decide what we want for our default plan. Mm -hmm. And that's the board that is the ultimate decision-making body for that. Our, our select board will yeah. get, yeah. But, but so m what, what my proposal was, and so, so the town of Sunderland um, sent around a, a survey that they wanted to send to the town of Sunderland, and we talked about it in the last meeting with the broker, and we all said, this is a good idea. And so um, I have Sunderland's survey that they want to send out to everyone in Sunderland to basically get a feel for the town of what people's major motivations would be for the electricity they would want to buy. You know, to some extent, I mean, I think that's the easiest way to think about it, is what would you want to buy if you had a number of plans? Mm -hmm. And then we could choose the top three of those plans as the plans that we're going to have people be able to buy. And the top one could be what we default people into. Mm -hmm. And so the plans might be no extra green, you know, just um, lo you know, lower price than the utility, but, but no extra green at all. Maybe a 5% extra green, maybe a... 15% extra green, or in Greenfield's case, they're offering, and in Leverett's case, they're now offering 100% um, additional green, mm -hmm. and still the price less than the utility, because right now there is a lot of renewable e energy around. You, you can buy... Texas wind power. And so some of it is Texas, and then are, would people prefer us to purchase um, you know, our, our greener energy from local New England firms as opposed to Midwestern firms. So, so well, these, these are all... The, the difference between what's happening now with RECs, with, with your, your local RECs... What's RECs? Your renewable energy certificates. Okay, that's, that's the way How you was buy... was I supposed to know what that meant? Yeah, I know, I should have I said that. that. That's the way you buy green energy because you can't guarantee that green energy is coming to your house but you you know it's in the grid and an electron okay. is an electron that's right you know you can't say oh that green electron's coming to my house so the way you you account for that is through purchase of, of renewable energy certificates now you can get these you can get texas wind for like one mil okay it's really low but then that doesn't add anything to uh, producing more projects here in Massachusetts. So if you buy local renewable energy credits, which are more expensive here in Massachusetts, you can buy, obviously can't buy as much as if you bought Texas Wind, okay? 
that's why I, you, you see some of these these um, towns are getting quote a hundred percent okay but they're buying wrecks from you know in the Midwest you know uh, South Dakota wind or Texas wind it's not doing Massachusetts any good okay but if you take a small amount like a five percent kick on that you know basic conventional energy all of that five percent by a whole town goes to support local renewable energy projects so now you're adding to your re local renewable energy and it's much better than doing a hundred percent with texas wind so that's the so difference you're advocating for something other than a free market solution i, I i'm advocating for what works here at this point in time which in in Massachusetts it's a subsidy situation you know that's yeah. what happens you know here in Massachusetts the utilities are required to purchase a certain percentage of RECs from um, from various providers of green electricity uh, a certain percentage of solar RECs from solar providers a certain percentage of hydro RECs a certain percentage of wind RECs um, and so and that's what about 13 14 percent now it's 14 14 percent yeah. for 2019 so, so, so they have to pr for for they have to, for the, they have to you could say cover 14 percent of their electricity purchases with that much renewable energy credit rates which which don't sell for that much it's not a lot of money and and you expect to get good feedback on this stuff from through a, uh, a, one a survey, survey. A survey. And, I, I, so, so my proposal would be stuff is, really is, that, is that I'll write something, I'll send it to John, and and we bring it to the board next week, and we can talk about it and vote on it, and hopefully it will not be complicated. I, I, I mean, the ideas, in a general sense, are not complicated. What do you look for in our in our town aggregation? Would you rather it were the absolutely lowest price, or would you? Would you be willing to pay slightly more to have a higher percentage of, of support for green energy? Local green energy, though, right? Is Local because, green energy? Yes. Or, do you, or would you rather have the bragging rights of saying Conway is 100% green? Whereas really it's more just bragging rights. It doesn't really help the amount of renewable that's available here in New England. So. But as a, as an overall country, aren't we better off if like Texas is dominant in wind power instead of oil, and it, and, and and if those types of states uh, it, be, become it's become, not it's not quite as simple. Oh, they're, they're building them anyway. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Tom. So this is the survey that someone's going to send out. And we can look at this. Maybe you'll like this. But there's a cover letter on the back. Yeah. Which is actually the front. Oh, I'm I'm glad it's a it's a simple, easy survey. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. maybe we can make it easier. But uh, no, this, is this, looks, not, this looks fine. Yeah, so it's I would, got I exactly what it needs and nothing more. So I would, I would like us to send out a survey so that when in this summer, when, when we have to make a decision on what we, what we want to offer the people of so Conway. Are the, these are listed in, um, in order of, of probable expense from less least expense to most expense? Well, no, you've got purchase of the cheapest electricity available. That right. means the same, the same renewable uh, portfolio standard as Massachusetts, the Commonwealth. No matter where you get your electricity from in Massachusetts, you have to have 14% green energy in the mix. Okay, so that's the lowest. This is the greenness of the utility. So is the next one more expensive than that, necessarily? Yeah. Well, that's 100%. So, right now, if you went 100%, you could you could figure about three cents more than the cheapest. See, I think the survey should say that because that's really critical information for people's decision making. Yeah, it, it's good it's good to have certain numbers in here about you know what the additional cost would be, even if it's an estimate. Okay, and then purchase of, of both cheaper and greener electricity as much as it's yeah, still we'll cheaper than ever. Put a price okay. tag on your philosophy, it becomes oh. more interesting. So, so, so the yeah. next one is proposing how much green can we buy but not have it cost more than the utility? 
as and that's in a way that's what Greenfield always has done. They look for a bid that's as green as possible, but less than the utility. Right. And then the last one is locally locally generated Massachusetts class one recs. That's a good survey. So can we um can, can that be handed out at town meeting as people are leaving instead of doing postage or? Um, I think it's a lot better to do the postage because then you get everybody. We we get you know fifteen percent, ten to fifteen percent turnout at, mm. at town meeting. Mm. So uh, could we mail everyone a postcard that they could return? That the idea. Yeah, it doesn't cost much to do. It costs one hundred and fifty dollars to do a town wide mailing. Yeah, that's that's a absolutely worth it. I think that. Yeah. Um, and of course, double that if we include a self addressed stamped envelope. Yeah. Which I think is important because people, mm -hmm. people, you know, if people see. Oh, all I have to do is check a couple of boxes and throw it in the envelope and throw it out. Get it in the mail. That that helps a lot because having to. Address the envelope, put the stamp on it. A lot of people will do that. I have to see if we can get the bulk mail permit for the return mm. letters as well. So that we don't, oh, yeah, we don't we pay could. for the ones that aren't sent. Yeah, we, we could do that. Yeah. We could do that. Okay. That's good survey. I like that. So, I mean, I don't know if you want to improve, approve it now, but, but I, I, yeah. I think we should read this and. Yeah, you, you make some annotations to it, and we'll look at it next week. Right, great. Okay. All right, next item. Uh, we have um, employee recognition for Nick Filler, our fine town moderator. 20 years. Okay, for Nick. And we have for Russ French, um, service to the town as one of our assessors for 10 years. I'll make a motion that we sign these two letters of recognition. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is an item not anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Tom, why don't you explain the background to this? Sure. Um, can I just get who seconded that last? Uh, it doesn't feel like it is unanimous. It's on tape, Tom. So it's, Thank it's you. immortalized. Yeah. Well. Immortalized on tape. <laughs> um, yes, and I have gone back to the tape sometimes to clarify some things, mm -hmm. but uh, it uh, is a little time consuming. So, uh, yes, um, we have had an instance of someone planting uh, a campaign uh, um, sign right in front of this window here. Um, and that causes a couple of concerns. One of them is, um, you know, the, uh, using town resources for promoting personal political agendas, um, which once you get into office, you can't do. Um, and uh, it, it makes it look like the, the town is, uh, potentially, if there aren't more than one sign there, it makes it look like you know, we, the town might be supporting that activity. And, and secondly, the, the logistics of having to try to police the placement of those and, oh, my sign's blocking your sign and I'm going to complain, and uh, I can't imagine getting into that kind of uh, dispute. Do we not have a policy now? We have a policy that is for, and you know, I made copies of it. Did I not hand them out? Um, no. For election day? Uh, maybe I didn't make the copy. Uh, what's that? Um, the the uh, no. the current policy. We we do have a current policy that says that during you uh, took you took it back. It's sitting sitting over there. I think. I did. Huh. All right. Um, well, what it says is. Uh, and this was just uh, a couple of years ago. Um, it's for early voting. It just says, it says during early voting and absentee ballot voting that you can't have um, political or campaign signs at this building. 
um, because this is where people come to do that. And that's related to the election laws that say you can't have a, you can't campaign at the polling place. You it's to, within 150 feet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so it's it's related to that. Um, but it's just a whole lot easier if we just don't get into any of that and say, don't use town property right. for political campaign. See, uh, if you're going to, uh, but we allow town property to be used for economic speech, right? I mean, we allow town property to be used for uh, real estate signs and signs of... Like, like where? We do. Um, um, we, we, we actually... Um, Outside of Masonic Hall, that triangle always gets real estate signs in it. Um, yeah, and and I know and Christmas that tree sign, it, farm signs, and things that, like that, that. There has been. Um, we certainly don't allow commercial activity within the town office or the town hall, so we could extend it to commercial. I think signs if, as I, well. I think there's. I think to, uh, from so what I can recall of constitutional law, there's a real problem in regulating speech of one nature, uh, uh, just one aspect of speech and allowing another aspect of it to, you either say it, you know, there's no signs on town property. I, I think when you go to say political or campaign signs, um, and but you allow real estate signs and Christmas tree sale signs, I, th I think that you're in, on thin ice. Well, but, the, the, the reason- and, and I'd be fine with outlawing all, all commercial, all signs whatsoever. The, the reason for for this is because you don't want somebody to think if somebody puts a sign outside that the town is endorsing that particular person. I thought we right. had a special provision for directional signs, you know, to say, you know, this direction, you know, you know, the Christmas tree sales, you know, that way, something like that. Yeah, and, and I, um, but, you know, the, the, the question of commercial signs is, is another question. Um, that uh, I would be I would be happy to take up. We don't have any. I, I don't know that. I I actually have had some questions about that in the past. Um, but there is a current issue about political and campaign signs that I'd like to get through, and I would be happy to propose commercial signs in the future. I think it's fine to have nonprofits. Um, you know, which are. It's not. It's not. Somebody's not making money off of being able to use town resources. That that's that's. And people aren't aren't um, gaining a personal advantage in campaigning by using. I town I, I get why you, like why that. you want to outlaw so, the thing, but um, and, and I, I, I think again, I think it's constitutional. You're just fine constitu with me too. If, if you just look up like um, ability to restrict free speech. I, you either restrict speech, like all of it, or. It's either all okay or it's none of it's okay. I don't think you can pick and choose the subject matter of the speech that you wish to allow. Well, so, so if we said no sign shall be allowed fire. on town property, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. I like that. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll rewrite it. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if there's yeah, because um, apparently there was, uh, someone came in and asked Ginny if they could put a sign out here, and Ginny said no. And this Tom came in this morning and the sign was there. Huh. Huh. So, um, wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was in, in um, violation of the current policy. Yeah. So, you know, that was good. I will say, you know, this is a policy. All policies are policies. Nothing's written in stone. It can always be reviewed, it's revised. A, it's an eight-word you know, policy. Nuanced. That can be put into effect today and amended in the future. Sounds good. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion that we... Um, uh-oh. What did I do? I just, I just didn't do it on the time. Oh. So that way, you know, everybody understands that no signs on on town property. Thank you. It's okay. 
you know, the only signs that I wonder about is when we have town events. You know, if there's a the town can put you could put signs up on your own property. Okay, it's the town putting yes. it up on its own property. Oh yeah, we, yeah, you can okay. you can put it on your if you want. I mean, at the fiftieth, we had a lot of signs pointing yeah. this way for that event, mm -hmm. and yeah, you know, this and, way for and, the run. And, and if there's something uh, like the Festival of the Hills that the town that the select board says we will grant an exemption to the policy for this yeah, kind of sure. sign for this duration at these places, you know, that's great. Okay, so we have this signs on town property policy to be adopted today that says no signs will be allowed on town property. Okay. Yeah, great. So is that good with everybody? Yeah. All right, I'll make that motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Keeps it less cluttered in some ways, but Tom, you have an update for us. Yeah, it. actually, I got one thing too. The, um, the, the forty-eight hours thing, and that's just I saw a flyer in Baker's today of uh, the foundation that is proposed to be. Uh, it's in our town warrant. Our, I think it's Friend, Article, Friends of Conway. Yeah. Friends of Conway Foundation, and I was um, I was really I, I couldn't. Uh, I, so, I, and I don't know if you you saw that. So, I, I, the the warrant article, as I recall, was. Think about forming a foundation. The, the 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 flyer that I and I could be wrong about that. It, it, it was to see whether the town would would support the establishment of a private nonprofit group. So and what I found out from the flyer was that our assessor has already filed the paperwork and created the foundation, and her her and Sue Bridge are so far the foundation, and their number one goal was to obtain pilot payments for the two reservoirs held by the cities of Deerfield and Northampton. And um, payments in lieu of taxes from those two municipalities. And that they, that's their number one goal as a foundation on, it, uh, that they listed. Was this the flyer? This was an early draft. Did um, it look like that? No, nah, in more, more oh. yeah, maybe, maybe. This is, this is a draft, yeah. uh, which is going to be changed. I'm going to be speaking with Lee about it on Friday. Right, so so when you look at just the second uh, paragraph, yeah. and tell me whether that is not a core governmental function. And why in the world would you want a private foundation? I, I, that, that's, that's whacked. I, you, you don't do that. Um, that's not... We're, right, we, we, don't, we don't outsource all, all of the, all of this stuff will be worked out by town council. You know. Well, what, well, I, the, what, what they're not, saying is, is that they did. would they would advocate for the pilot to be paid to to the, the town. town to the town, not the family. They're, they're not. They're and they're I was just like, that's the why, why that, has the assessor ever came into this organ this body and said we're not getting a pilot from them and we should? Um, oh yeah. Both both Sue and and uh, Lee want to come in and talk to us about this. Okay. Oh, yes. but but the the assessor has has often. I'm, I was unaware of that we should schedule a meeting with the when, town when with we the, uh, our respective select boards well, and talk well, to them. Whenever mm -hmm. we set the uh, the tax classification, she goes through a spiel about how there's a whole lot of money that we can't tax in the town, and if we had, um, you know. The ability to get more money from the places that are not taxed, uh, it would be great. Because I, I would be, I would, I would have been all over that. Um, I see, I see people from those towns all the time. We have those letters. Where are those letters? Oh, uh, oh, oh, got them. Okay, here you go. Okay. Hey, you want to, you want to put them in here? Oh yeah. Thank you. So anyway, this is the. This is going to be amended, uh, but it does have some facts and figures and reduced taxes and exempt taxes and all of that sort of thing on it. And of course, not all of this would even be possible because a couple of the couple of these are the town of Conway and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And good luck getting anything out of the town of Conway. You know? uh, that, but it's there because it's part of the picture. So. Um, and the, when I when I um, spoke, to, I, I guess I saw Sue very briefly about it. It just seemed like there a lot of what they propose is sort of duplicated by current and existing county functions and town functions, and um, 
you know, there's already been several county funded or FERCOG funded reports that go into great detail about what the town of Conway could do to, uh, to, you know, uh, for, for climate change and how the, 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 our, the principal thing was woodlot management and using woodlots to as carbon sinks and when great, whatever, but that stuff's all been done and um, yeah, they, the, the, the idea that we should have a foundation to look into well, they, they kind of want to push the idea. Well, here, here's the thing: there, there are there are purposes, there are other purposes for this foundation that would supplement things that the town is now either not doing or has chosen not to do or doesn't have enough money to do. And so the whole bit about getting money is to say, and we'll work to get money to get these things funded. So. That's the, the getting the money is the means, but there's a discussion around the ends, and a lot of those have to do with um, uh, climate mitigation, climate change mitigation, and uh, increasing our emergency preparedness. So, you know, those are, um, you know, and it, it, by means of, say, uh, donations to specific. Um, projects or the, 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 what kind of disturbed me about it also is that you know in order to get a pilot payment from someone there has to be a lawful basis to get the pilot payment mm -hmm. or to make a claim it's it's easy it's you can make the claim against um, educational institutions Deerfield academies and Smith colleges because you can potentially make a challenge to their tax exempt charitable status and mm -hmm. get up and, and get leverage in that way but for municipalities have a statutory um, uh, they're statutorily exempt mm -hmm. from paying the ta those taxes. And, and all they're, and, and all they're suggesting is, is an approach uh, for them to voluntarily pay but, a certain amount. And, um, yeah, with, without an actual legal theory, when, when law, it's, set, it's, when it's law says they don't have to. Right. Yeah, it's voluntary. Right. That's all they're proposing. But it sets up they, in, in, they, the eyes of, in the eyes of the community that this thing is like actually possible or uh. that others are, diligent, <laughs> others are diligent in not, in not having, you know, are, are, are not being diligent in the fact that this hasn't been done yet. Mm -hmm. And so I, whatever, I thought. Well, it, yeah, is, it is true that, that I, I don't know if the town has ever approached um, any particular entity which is exempt from taxes to request pilot payments. Um, Smith College would be the most likely. But um, North do we have Smithland? Yeah, we yeah, Northampton yeah. Land. We have Smithland, and Northampton hit them up and got pilot from them. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> looks like yeah. a good precedent. Yeah. But but no, but Deerfield. I think they're optimistic <coughs> in the amount that they are asking for, but. Uh, and, but again, the, it, the, the main purpose is to set up a foundation that could receive money that would be spent on things that would supplement um, things that, that the town could be doing with emergency management, uh, especially. And uh, the, I, I think that the, the whole... Um, financial thing and the whole pilot thing came in as a way to say and we're going to work to get to see if we can get money from these potential sources as a way of you know boosting whatever you know contributions we might get from the public so that's great feedback that I'm happy to bring to Lee on Friday when I meet her good <laughs> okay thank you Phil <clears throat> Thomas you have an update for us hey Tom the uh I got a call from Alan the other day saying to come in at 6 30. He said something about Walter Goodrich and. Oh, yeah. They, um, they were here. They, they, they had been left. here. Done and gone. Done and yeah. gone. So it wasn't 6 30. But they're doing a public meeting on their thing um, Saturday morning, May 4th at 9 a.m. Oh, pre sale? Yeah, pre sale. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, all departmental news this time. Um, DOR's Division of Local Services has published the House version of the Cherry Sheets. This is the House Ways and Means Committee budget, which raised the assessments to Conway by about $23,000, almost all for charter school charges. We get virtually nothing in charter school receipts. Mm. The Senate bill will come out next, and then the conference figures, and finally a budget signed by the governor, so there's a long way to go yet. 
the change is all on the school side, but it is a substantial change the town would, would have to cover, I should say. Yeah. Uh, okay. So an extra $23,000 in charges. Um, an elm tree has been delivered to the Pumpkin Hollow. Well, these not expected. Oh, I mean, it is not not part of the current. This budget. is the house. This came this out of the house, house budget. Mm. Um, uh, an elm tree has been delivered to the Pumpkin Hollow Common as part of the Greenfield Savings Bank donation. Uh, though the enthusiasm with which the project was taken on resulted in imperfect communication regarding timing and roles among all relevant parties. I believe I have managed to smooth over some potential rough areas and that it will be successfully planted soon. Is somebody else okay. waiting you to, build, to dig the hole? Do you, do you have a um, I've, I'm among the relevant parties that have been smoothed over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> do you know if it's planted yet? It is not planted. Um, we were taken off the job because the bank wants to plant it themselves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Go bank. Yeah. Um, the uh, highway department has received a note regarding the sorry state of the sign for the town hall and is working on a combination of refurbishment of the sign and replacement of the post. I have noted that the town office sign is also in need of attention. I've been working through the logistics of the transition to a new town clerk based on information from the current town clerk. I believe everything is straightened out. We'll have the current town clerk swear in the moderator and a justice of the peace swear in the new town clerk. Um, that uh, the town clerk, um, the new town clerk takes office uh, as early as seven days after the election. Um, but it needn't be that early, so we're still not exactly sure when it will happen. Um, but there's there's a surprising amount of logistics to mm. take care of. Uh, in other news regarding the current town clerk, uh, staff would like to propose a retirement party for the town clerk on Thursday, May 23rd from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Conway Inn. This is the official date of her retirement, being seven days after the election. I will add that she expects to continue in a consulting role through this fiscal year and in fiscal year 2020 as well, as well as remaining clerk to the Board of Health. The meeting for the Public Employees Committee to review the health care plan changes is set for Thursday, April 23rd. There's still quite a bit of paperwork after that, but I hope that they will vote to accept the changes, after which we should be back on track in terms of deadlines. Uh, we notify eligible members of the changes, and since we're in an open enrollment period, they can join or move if they like. Of course, this is always the budgetary challenge, not knowing the result of open employment before setting the budget. Open enrollment, but yeah. But luckily, our treasurer has an excellent sense of change from year to year, and so we've never had any serious problems. He does. The town report should be mailed Friday, which means people should have it by Monday at the latest, or two weeks before town meeting. Excellent. So I've waited the whole time to make my comments, because I know you prefer that. Oh, thank you. Um, so, uh, the, the first, the, the, your first paragraph, the, um, just to let you know that the, the charter school, this is the first year in Massachusetts where the, charter, the outflows to charter schools from towns will exceed one billion dollars. Um, and Coincidentally, the amount that the Chapter 70 Foundation Budget Committee uh, desperately wants to bring in in new education revenue is about $1 billion. And um, in that discuss to see the chairman of the House part, this Alice Pace, she was adamant that she's not going to touch the charter school aspect of it. It doesn't, she said, it doesn't, charter schools don't affect her district. They don't affect the districts near her. It's as far as she's concerned, it's for. It doesn't affect many students in our, and she was fine with towns paying a billion dollars a year to charter schools. Mm -hmm. um, and she was actually chased out of that meeting on Thursday mm -hmm. um, by people that were really irate with her. The, but um, the, the other thing, the town clerk were talking, so 40 years on the job, you, I, I don't know about you, but you, you gotta do something. The, the watch, the key, the threat, the whatever, I don't know what you do, but you gotta do something. And sure, it's, gotta, it's gotta be classy. Uh, a document, uh, I mm -hmm. think a, a 
fancy style of that, uh, can it? No, no, for real. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, that's part of it. We got we got to spend some money or do something to make. I mean, it's. I agree. You, Forty years is ridiculous. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take suggestions from the board. Mm -hmm. A gold watch, a key, a framed key to the town. I don't know what something. That, that's what you do. That's what they get. Used um, to be gold coins. Why don't you come up with a couple of suggestions and we'll take it up at next week's meeting? How's that? Mm -hmm. And okay. and any input you guys have, please give it to Tom. And we'll come up with a couple of alternatives and and uh, uh, see what we like. Let me know. The big businesses often have a whole catalog. You get to choose what item interests you. Yeah, a gift certificate would not be a bad idea. Uh huh. Same idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank She's you, Tom. a knitter. Mail. Okay, what do we get in the mail? We got a uh, an email from Mass DOT concerning upcoming capital investment program public meeting schedule. Okay. We have public meetings uh, from May 21st through June 6th. Your assistance in providing public comment and getting the word out about these meetings is greatly appreciated. How does that affect us? Um, public comment. Does does Ron knows about this, Tom? Right? Yeah. Okay. So he's gonna he's gonna do some public comments I, for us. I have no idea. That there's the email address there to send public comments to it as well. This mm -hmm. is uh, an annual exercise of the DOT, but it's receiving um, uh, input on their capital. Um, it, you know their capital plan and, and there, there what is they ought to spend money on and we need to tell them to spend more money on bridges I think, yeah. there is an email there address here bridges. if anybody wants to make a public comment to, to yeah. DOT. Uh then we have a, uh, an email from the International Code Council you're familiar with that right? yeah what, you want to comment on that? so this is something that we didn't even know about we voted that Conway would Join the International would, would Code support. Council, mm -hmm. and we haven't yet selected who the four actual voters would be. You, you know, an example might be Tom and the three board members, or it could be if nobody, somebody you don't want to do it. You, you know, there's people from the Long Term Planning Committee or any of the major committees in town, uh, but we're allowed four votes. And the way I read this letter is that. They have a college scholarship program for people that are going to be voting on the college, on the uh, on the on the codes, mm -hmm. and so somebody who has a college age student would possibly be able to take advantage of that. All right, sign me up. So <laughs> I just can't believe you how much naturally it. came to mind, but you know, I mean, I I, I don't, but uh, but it was your idea, so you should be one of the voting members. <laughs> I would gladly be a voting member, but I, yeah, yes, but I don't think that somebody anyway. It's something that we didn't even know about, and and now that we're members, you know, Tom often gets documentation to Conway that we never got before, and this was came in a letter recently. Quite a surprise. Okay. Um, for people who are um, going to be voting members, um, I can strongly recommend setting up a meeting with uh, Jim Hawkins at the FERCOG, who's been dealing with ICC stuff for decades <coughs> and uh, has a very keen sense of um, how various changes would affect things. And sometimes um, there are uh, unexpected conflicts in policy where, uh, for instance, uh, mandating energy upgrades can be <coughs> counter to affordable housing. So that's, that's, that's the, the kind of um, policy wrangle you get into. I suspect, mm -hmm. I, I don't know of any other towns, but I believe there are other towns in Franklin County that also signed up to join the Code Council. So mm -hmm. okay. we, we, we could set up a meeting with them for all of us together. Yeah. Okay, any other announcements? No. Okay. Our next meeting is for uh, Monday, April 29th, here in the town offices at 6 p.m. Uh, if there's no other business to come before the board, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen.